Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark cards bring you an unusual true story on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. And here is our distinguished host, Mr. Lionel Barrymore. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another true story about real people on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Tonight, we honor an explorer and a man of God, a man named Sheldon Jackson, who was destined to play a vital part in the development of the vast and fabulous Alaska Territory. You know, Sheldon Jackson just didn't belong in the wild Alaska of 60 years ago. He was a small, mild-mannered man, past the prime of life, and he, he wore thick glasses, and, and you'd expect the first Arctic blizzard to blow him away. Yet there he was, building his schools and his missions, unaware he was about to lead one of the most amazing and exciting expeditions of all time. Yes, sir, this incredible adventure is our true story tonight. Now, here is Frank Goss from the makers of Hallmark Cards. The next time you want to send your best wishes across the miles, visit a store where Hallmark Cards are sold. You'll find a wonderful collection to choose from, cards with new ideas, new designs, and colors, and new ways of saying what you want to say, just the way you want to say it. Just look for the Hallmark and Crown on the back of each greeting you select, the symbol that means you care enough to send the very best. Lionel Barrymore appears by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of Julius Caesar with an all-star cast, including Marlon Brando, James Mason, John Gilgood, and Louis Calhoun. And now Mr. Barrymore brings you tonight's exciting story on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Raw and untamed, struggling courageously to find its way in the American scene, her two most pressing needs, food and transportation. Sheldon Jackson had long advocated importing reindeer from Siberia to solve both problems, and had finally been able to bring in a few herds for a start, but it was far from enough. Seeking further aid from the United States government, Sheldon Jackson was in Washington when disaster struck in his beloved Northland. Yes, sir? The Reverend Sheldon Jackson? Yes. I'm Lieutenant DeVore, United States Navy. I have a message from the Secretary of War. At this time of night? Oh, excuse me, Lieutenant. Come in. Thank you. I'm afraid there's very bad news from Alaska. What is it? The miners in the upper Yukon report a shortage of food. Fifteen ships bringing supplies are caught fast in the ice. The city of Dawson is faced with starvation. Well, isn't there some way the ships can be freed? Well, everything has been tried, sir. The Secretary of War thinks your reindeer may save the situation. Oh, but there aren't enough reindeer broken to harness to be of any use, Lieutenant. Oh, we know, sir. I thought I pleaded with the government to let me build up the reindeer herds in Alaska to practical strength. Now see what happens, and we're helpless. The Secretary Alger thinks you could buy enough harness reindeer in Lapland. Lapland? Why, that's the other side of the world. The Secretary urges you to go, sir. $200,000 will be set aside for the expedition. When would they want me to leave? We should leave for New York tonight. Tonight? We have to go to Lapland, return the deer to New York, and transport them to Seattle, and then Alaska. 
and then a drive overland in the teeth of winter. So there's little time to waste, sir. I'm to help in every way I can. Thank you. I shall need help. I'll wake my wife and tell her. Only three days later, the liner Lucania takes aboard a slight, nearsighted minister of the gospel and a naval lieutenant for the start of a 30,000-mile odyssey outmatched in history. England, Holland, Denmark, Norway, Lapland, speed. The urgent need for speed in the speedless days of 1897. Lapland, a blizzard. In a small hotel room, Jackson and Devore make a triumphant accounting. 538 head of reindeer. 538 reindeer. 418 sledges for heavy duty. 418. 511 sets of harness. 511. Good. Our agents have done well. 68 lap drivers. We'll supplement them with Eskimo and white drivers when we land the deer in Alaska. Huh. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Yes, sir. The ship arrives from Glasgow tomorrow to take us aboard. The North Sea. The icy North Atlantic. Westbound for New York with a cargo of urgent mercy. Sheldon Jackson shivers in his cabin and keeps his careful journal. January 25th, 1897. Appalling weather. Iceland is 100 miles off our starboard. Icebergs litter the sea dangerously. The ship crawls through the ice fields. Faster. If we could only go faster. Faster. Collision at sea. The ship grazes a floating iceberg, and the first casualty, Lieutenant Devore, was thrown violently to the deck. Right here. Lay him on this bunk. Yeah. Well, here we go. Here we are, carefully. Now, that's fine. Fine. I tell you, I'm all right. Thank you, men. Thank you. You had no business on deck in this gale. Checking the reindeer on the hurricane deck. You may be seriously hurt. Why, your ribs could be broken. Well, I'll, I'll be all right. Is the ship badly damaged? No, we just grazed that iceberg. Lucky. <coughs> Did we lose any reindeer? One. That's not too bad. But every reindeer is several lives. I know, that's why. <laughs> it catches me. Well, now... Take it easy. Oh, I hope you don't have to leave the expedition. Don't worry. January 29th, 1897. The reindeer are taking the voyage splendidly. Only one more lost so far. They have answered my critics. They can survive the North Atlantic at its very worst. Pray God they can survive Alaska at its very worst. New York. From ship to train. From New York to Seattle. A cargo of reindeer. Freight load of living mercy. Now from train to ship again. Seattle to Haines Mission, Alaska. The jumping off place. Several deer dead now. Sheldon Jackson had telegraphed ahead for replacements from the sparse Alaskan herds. Their arrival brought the first disharmony in the rescue party. Come in. The boss says you were looking for me. Yes, Ransom. 
You've been drinking again. I take a drink now and then. Why? Ransom, you're the best reindeer driver I know. Drunk or sober, Dr. Jackson? I telegraphed ahead for you to bring down reindeer replacements from the herd at Teller. I did, didn't I? You were nine days late. Hmm. The reindeer down here have consumed most of the supply of moss. Just waiting, Ransom. We may have to press on to Dawson, hoping to find food for the deer on the way. I was held up by the weather. I told him all that. His version is that you were under the weather. Yeah? What good is he? His ribs are all taped up. Ransom, try to understand the value of every single reindeer in our herd in terms of human life. I know all about that. Then why did you forget to saw the antlers off those bucks you brought from Teller? I told Otis Arlock to do it. Before he could get to it, the deer fought. Three bucks killed each other. It was your responsibility, not Otis Arlock's. I can quit, you know. I can quit right now. Yes, I know, but don't. You're an invaluable man when you're sober. You got anything new to say to me? We start before dawn. Every man must do his full duty. I beg of you, Ransom. Be the man I know you are. Hmm. I'll be there. Morning, Dr. Jackson. Oh, good morning, Lieutenant. Well, all set to go, sir. Did a supply of reindeer moss arrive? No, sir. You'll try to forage off the land. Medicines all stowed? Safe and sound in ransom sledge. Oh, my extra pair of spectacles. What did I do with them? <laughs> I have them, Doctor. Uh, well, a promising morning for a start. The weather is treacherous this season of the year. So I'm told. I hope you wrote some letters last night. Yes, sir. I wrote my wife. Uh, you must navigate for us, but can you also manage the lead sled? I'll change off with the Laplander. Lead, I'll come next, then Artisarlook, then the others. Ransom will cover the rear. Good luck. Good luck, sir. All right, up, fellas. Good animal, up. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Ready, Lieutenant? Ready. March! In just a moment, we return to the second act of the Hallmark Hall of Fame. If you're an art lover, perhaps you've noticed the growing interest in fine art in America. It seems that today, more than ever before, people visit their local art galleries regularly and make it a point to see the traveling art exhibits that come to their cities. Now, most of us can't afford to own great paintings or to buy them for gifts. But there is one wonderful way you can send faithful reproductions to your friends at Christmas time. Just select your cards from the Hallmark Hall of Fame collection of artist cards in boxes. You'll find them in a special display at fine stores where Hallmark cards are sold. You can have Christmas cards designed and signed by Norman Rockwell, Steinberg, Grandma Moses, Hulda, Doris Lee, and many other famous painters. Or you can select Hallmark Christmas cards with inspirational messages by Dr. Norman Vincent Peale or with the poetry of Edgar Guest. Best of all, the cards in the Hall of Fame collection cost as little as one dollar for a box of 12, including three or four different styles. So why not get yours soon? You can count on it. The hallmark and crown on the back of each card you mail will tell your friends you care enough to send the very best. And now Lionel Barrymore brings you the second act of our true story of Sheldon Jackson. Northward, over 
500 reindeer driving northward toward the Yukon to provide food for starving miners. Already 200 of them are dead from scurvy and other diseases caused by the scarcity of food. There's a quiet, grim panic in the Dawson City. Part of the south, dark figures move across the immense snow fields with help. The weather holds fair. How long? First day. It has turned bitterly cold. Snow is in the offing. More losses. I had to blame Ransom. It was on his flank the wolves dragged down four of our finest reindeer. He took his rebuke around the campfire quite badly. How could I get a shot at them? I never saw them. Snowblind, Ransom? No, no DeVore, just gentlemen. awful busy taking care of a lot of tender feet. Along with my sled and reindeer. Tender feet, Ransom? Tender feet, yeah, and invalids. I think I've been doing my share, Ransom. I've been hurting your reindeer when you've had to rest in your sled. I'll do better. Sorry. Now, look... I won't be blamed for what isn't my fault. Oh, let it go, let it go. Artisalik will manage your flank tomorrow. Maybe you don't want me around here at all. I only want to divide the work fairly. Yeah? Well, it doesn't take two to find the way to Dawson. Lieutenant Devorah is with us as the official representative of the United States government as well as navigator. Navigator? Yes, Ransom, navigator. What do you college stargazers do when there aren't any stars, huh? I know this country, you don't. It's gonna snow. It's gonna snow a blizzard. And where'll you be, stargazer? How right Ransom has been. The North has turned upon us in all its savagery. It snows in sheets and never stops. The wind is insane. It hammers at us and at the weakening reindeer. since Ransom disappeared. Dr. Jackson, there was nothing you could do about him. Perhaps not. He deserted. Because I humiliated him before the men. There has to be discipline, Doctor. You disciplined him. To have done less would have been to betray the entire expedition. You're very kind. I tell you... <coughs> oh, you've been coughing since that heavy wind, Lieutenant. You, you didn't hurt your chest again. No, no, no. I wouldn't want to lose you, do? Doctor... You didn't lose Ransom. He'll be all right. All right. With the sledge full of medicines and not an ounce of food? With his reindeer slowly starving on their feet, Lieutenant, whatever food there was in the party, whatever food there is left for the reindeer, we have. He'll... He'll live off the country. Yes, I hope so. How cold is it, Lieutenant? 58 degrees below zero. Snow. Endless, pitiless snow. The sixth day. 73 below zero. 
In such cold the senses stumble, the mind wanders, the life impulse flickers, and the reindeer moss is gone, and no forage. We must find grazing grounds for the deer, or all is lost. Dr. Jackson, there must be forage when we get over the Chilkat Pass. Yes, but where is the I'll pass? I'll find it. I'll find it. Snow, snow, snow. Well, we'd better get some sleep. Oh, well, you've got to stay awake. It's turned very cold again. Wake up. Come on, on your feet. You'll freeze. Go away. You'll freeze to death if you fall asleep again. Oh, I'm warm. <coughs> Dr. Jackson. Dr. Jackson, wake up. I'm warm as toast. A shot. No, no. I'm sure. No, no, no. The trees, they split in the cold. Split open in the cold. Bang. Go to sleep. Those are shots. No, no. They're trees. It's ransom. No, no, it isn't. Just over the ridge! Dr. Jackson! <laughs> He's in trouble! Ransom! Dr. Jackson! Come in, Ransom! Come in! <sighs> if you could take more of this hot tea, Ransom. Not too fast. You can't swallow yet. Now? Try it. Come on, Ransom. Just a bit more now. Either that's it. Uh, he's exhausted. That feel better, Ransom? Better. Good man. I didn't... I didn't sneak off on you. Oh, that's all right, Ransom. You lost your head. Uh, Who wouldn't you got lost? Lost my head? Never get lost. Here, more hot tea. No. You can use it. No, no, I'm trying. I'm trying to remember. Think of something. What was it now? What was it, Ransom? What did you forget? Here. Mm. You can hold the cup now yourself, can't you? Can't. <clears throat> can't remember. Wish I could remember. I remember. This is it. In my hand. What is it? <laughs> Just a fistful of sod, it seems to me. Sod. No. No. No, it's reindeer moss. Sure is. Before sure. it's moss, it's a miracle. It's a fistful of reindeer moss. It... Ransom, you found the pass. You found pasturage for the deer. I have to dig some for it. We can save the rest of the reindeer. We can yeah. save the people of Dawson City. All is well. The pastures are white, not green, but the Lord is our shepherd as ever, as always. Amen. Can you travel, Lieutenant? Uh, certainly. You can show us the way, Ransom, can't you? Of course you can. Come on. Into your sledge, Ransom. You're a sick man. No, I'm all right. I'm all right. You ride, Ransom. We march. Everybody now. March! Reverend Sheldon Jackson's work extending over nine undeveloped states and three territories. He and his associates established no less than 886 churches and schools, including the famous Sheldon Jackson Boys School at Sitka, Alaska. Today, largely because of Jackson's work, Alaska stands as a rich and powerful member of the American community. Yes. Our country owes a lot to men of courage and faith like Sheldon Jackson. And next week on the Hallmark Hall of Fame, we're going to tell the true story of another colorful and adventurous man. Our scene will move from the frozen wastes of Alaska to a rip-roaring western frontier town in the days of the well-named Wild West. And the man we're going to honor belongs to a group often forgotten on the pages of our history books, the Frontier Newspaper Man. 
I want to tell you a little about this two-gun journalist in a moment, but first let's listen in on a little conversation Frank Goss had with his lovely wife. Well, yesterday I came home to find my wife going over our Christmas card list from last year. You know, Frank, she said, I seem to stop at every third name or so and just reminisce. Sending Christmas cards brings back so many memories of the good times we've shared with old friends. Well, I'm sure all of us find that Christmas cards span the days, the years, the miles, and form warm bonds of affection with those who are dear to us. That's why we want to be sure that the Christmas card we select truly reflects our taste and personality. Now, one of the easiest ways I know to find that ideal Christmas greeting for yourself or your family is to visit a store where Hallmark cards are sold. If you prefer Christmas cards imprinted with your name, you'll be delighted with the variety in the new Hallmark Christmas card albums. You can have reproductions of the paintings of famous artists like Grandma Moses, Steinberg, or Doris Lee. And this year, the works of the Associated American Artists appear on Hallmark Christmas cards for the first time. And remember, whichever Hallmark card you choose, the Hallmark and Crown on the back of each card you mail carries an extra measure of joy. For it means you carry enough to send the very best. And now here again is Lionel Barrymore. Say, Frank, uh, while I was listening to you, I had an idea. Y you know those boxes of notes that the Hallmark makes? Oh, you mean the uh, Hallmark everyday notes that you can use for invitations or thank you notes and the like? Big ass. Yes, 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 that's it. The Hallmark everyday notes. Well... They're real handy to have around, and they're smart-looking, too. Well, uh, I've been thinking, wouldn't they make real dandy Christmas presents? You know, you could buy several boxes of these notes for those extra Christmas gifts that you want to have on hand. A very good idea, Mr. Barrymore. <laughs> and those Hallmark notes cost only one dollar a box. Yeah, yep. Well, Frank... Uh, what about telling our friends a little about the two-gun journalist we're honoring next week on Hallmark Hall of Fame? His name is William Newton Byers, and he was Colorado's first newspaper editor and the founder of the Rocky Mountain News. And through his defiance of the lawless elements of his community, he contributed greatly to the successful development of our Colorado frontier. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. In the true story of William Newton Byers, you'll find all the rousing action and excitement of our vital frontier days. I hope you'll all be with us next week. Now remember, you're also invited to the Hallmark Hall of Fame on television every Sunday, starring Miss Sarah Churchill. Until next week, then, this is Lionel Barrymore saying good night. <laughs> that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Our producer director is William Gay. Our script tonight was written by Milton Geiger. Sheldon Jackson was played by Parley Bear and featured in our cast tonight were John Stevenson as Lieutenant DeBoer and Gerald Moore as Ransom. This is Frank Goss saying goodnight to you until next week at this same time when we present another true story and honor William Newton Byers, the two-gun journalist. The week following, we will tell our Thanksgiving Day story of fabulous Quanto the Cockney Indian. And the week after that, we'll tell you a little-known story about Benjamin Franklin on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. This is the CBS Radio Network. This is KMBC Kansas City, Missouri.